In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the original Sheik, uh, asked by one of our friends if I would uh, make a re take a request, and uh, sure, why not? I guess we're taking requests. Um, there's not a whole lot on the original Sheik uh, in the magazines early on. Um, he became more popular in the late 60s and in the 70s, and then disappeared again around the 80s. But I'll do my best to showcase his first magazine cover all the way till the end, follow his career and how he uh, got started in uprising uh, in the magazines and in programs and in the media. Uh, he started in 1947 as the Sheik of Araby. Uh, of course, the magazines didn't start until 1951. So there was no coverage of him in the 40s uh, that I have, um, that anyone has, because like I said, unless it was a small independent magazine, uh, he wasn't on or in anything. Um, his craft as becoming the Sheik really didn't kick up and get started until like the mid to late 60s. That's when he started taking notice uh, of him. Uh, he originally came in with his, uh, his wife. She was the... Um, uh, the manager, I guess, the valet, if you want to call it that, she would come in with the incense and, and uh, purify the ring and lay the prayer blanket down, and the sheik would do his his ceremony. Uh, then, of course, later on, he would get the uh, Abdul Farouk, uh, which was the um, uh, the Grand Wizard of Wrestling, and um, so on and so forth. So we're going to be taking a look at all of that uh, as we go along. Uh, before we get started, this was, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, a company in the mid-90s put out an original Sheik uh, doll or figure. It's pretty cool. Um, the, the belt was a custom made. I got that off of a, a guy who makes belts on Etsy. It's a He does fantastic jobs on belts. Um, but he, they do actually have a, a figure of the original Sheik. They made one of Abdul the Butcher, too. Um, I was very fortunate enough to be ringside to see the original Sheik in action. Uh, it's not a great picture. Uh, it's the best that I got. Let's see if I can get that any focus for you. Obviously, he is right here with the shirt off. This was in the uh, ECW arena for the night the line was crossed back in uh, 94, I believe. I remember it was Cinco de Mayo, so it was May 5th. Uh, I believe 94. Um, real quick on that. You know, they say that that three-way dance is what set the ECW on its path of popularity. That may be so, but I lived in South Jersey, South Philly area at the time, and I was a regular at the ECW arena. They would get decent-sized houses there. There was never any sold-out houses that I've ever seen. They were pretty full, three-quarters of the way full. It wasn't until... They announced the Sheik was coming till the place was sold out. That was their first sellout. I, we got there and the line was already wrapped around the corner. And we were like, holy shit. And everyone was there to see the Sheik. He sold the place out. He made that card. All the fans were there for this. It wasn't for the three-way dance. We didn't even know what a three-way dance was. That hasn't even been done yet. So it was because of the Sheik, and that was the uh, the main reason that that ECW arena sold out that night. The following card that they had there, it was nowhere near as full. <clears throat> so there's there's the proof. But here's a shot that I got. I had three or four other really good ones, but uh, over time I lost them. This is the only one that made it. I got a couple of Bruiser Brody when I seen him at ringside too. Maybe I'll show them in another video. Uh, this was just a, uh, a, a wall piece. It's fake. It's not fake. It's just a, a actual. It's a photocopy of the Sheik. Um, I just put it there while I was talking for a minute. This would be the Sheik's very first magazine cover, an issue of Wrestling Confidential, and this was in uh, July of 1964. Is wrestling fake? The Sheik is the blood fake? Question mark. And of course, you know, quite becoming of the Sheik, the first cover that he's on. And it's a full bloody cover uh, for issue number one for the Sheik. I looked everywhere and I own every magazine from the 50s and 60s. He was never on any other covers. He was on a small corner um, of the first or second issue of The Wrestler. I'm only going to showcase the magazines where he dominates the, the cover. 
not just a small little, you know, corner shot here with the Sheik's face. I want to, you know, cover him when he's fully on the magazine, okay? <clears throat> His next magazine cover would be February 66 in Wrestling Review. And you see he's got the foreign object here, which was basically, I don't know if you can see that or not, it was basically a, uh, a pencil that was taped. And that was his claim to fame hiding that under his trunks. He's also known for throwing the fireballs, and we'll see some of that too later on in some of these issues. Uh, the Sheik again, July of 1967. This picture was used early, um, maybe wrestling life in 1955, but it was real small, it was in black and white, um, and then again, it's used here. I don't have that issue of wrestling life. I, I didn't like that magazine. I never really thought it was a magazine. It was more like a pamphlet with like 10 pages. That's not a magazine to me. Um, but I believe it was Wrestling Life that that photo uh, was first uh, shown. Um, here is a February 1968 with uh, the Sheik on Wrestling World. Here's a fun note. The Sheik never, ever, despite what you might see or think or hear, ever posed for a cover of a magazine. He would never talk to a reporter. He would never talk to a photographer. And he would never pose for a photo. That's straight from George Napolitano's mouth and Bill Apter's mouth. And they were the two of the biggest photographers in the business. There was magazine covers that look like he's posing, like this one looks like he's posing, but he was not posing for this. He, they would either sneak shots, they would take candid shots when he wasn't paying attention, or they would take a shot when he was standing at the mic while his manager was talking and looking directly to the camera, but he never posed for a camera and never spoke other than some mumbling with some, you know, inco incoherent words that he may have been saying at the time. Uh, here is the, uh, the Sheik, and he's first talking about his manager, Abdul Farouk, who was obviously the Grand Wizard later on, and uh, somewhat uh, normal-looking shot of the Sheik here. Uh, no blood, pretty clean. Um, uh, just a pretty old-school shot from December of 1968. Farouk, the Sheik is being discriminated against. Here is uh, the Sheik on the cover of Inside Wrestling. Um, can't see the date here. July of 1969. Uh, this has got some good coverage of Bruno San Martino and the Sheik uh, going at it. They had a good feud, him and Bruno, uh, for the title in 1967 uh, before the Sheik got banned from the Garden. Um, they had three ba three matches at the Garden. Uh, neither one of them pinned each other. There were all disqualifications or countouts. The final match was the uh, uh, the Texas Death match, and Bruno was disqualified. He was he took the Sheik's pencil and jammed the pencil into his arm and uh, was disqualified. I, mean, I don't know what kind of a Texas Death match that is if you get disqualified from jamming a pencil in the guy's arm, but that's how he lost. Um, so from, from that point on, from 67, he wasn't back at the Gardens. The rest of their matches would take place either at Philly or in Boston. Um, Bruno and uh, the Sheik had three cage matches uh, between them. Um, I believe two were at Boston, one was in Philly. It might be the other way around, so don't quote me on that. Um, but this has got decent coverage of, uh, of the Sheik and, and Bruno in this issue. It's not written on. I wrote the first Joyce Grable across the top on the bag. Um, because there was two Joyce Grables, and people don't know that. Um, she would go by Judy Grable later on, but she went by Joyce Grable also before the Joyce Grable that we know about in 1976 or 5 when she came back. But anyway, uh, here is the, um, uh, the wrestler, uh, August 1969, and it's got the classic battle with Freddie Blassie. Um, the blood, you can see... Uh, Stanley Weston was was uh, enhancing the color. He enhanced the color of Blassie's hair. It's, it wasn't that yellow, uh, and, and the blood wasn't that pink. Uh, you'll see that actually in this magazine as well. I should I should say this: the blood is extremely fake looking. I mean, it just does not look natural. They colored that in for the make to make a sale on the magazines. Bloody magazines sold in the seventies. They stopped doing that uh, in the eighties um, because they. they Aptor said that the distributors were, were getting pissed off that they didn't want that kind of a magazine cover on their stand and people were getting upset and offended by it. And believe it or not, I guess the, you know, the, the, the publication caved and started going with more, you know, family friendly covers, which kind of turned me off. But you can clearly see that in this issue, if you have this issue, uh, the blood is just colored in with, with paint. 
as well. He, they're, I'm sure they're, they're bleeding here. Here you can see it's really dried on, and here it's colored in. You can see the two different tones to the blood, um, but they tried to recolor that in uh, to make it pop more to make a sale. And Bloody Magazines actually, you know, sold big early. I don't know why later on they would change that. Um, but I was always grabbing a bloody cover for sure. Uh, here again, looks like the Sheik is posing. He's not. Um, Bruno is afraid of the Sheik, says Farouk. Wrestling World covered a lot of the Sheik, as you'll see here in the 60s and early part of the 70s. Um, another one from February 1970. Uh, great shot of him uh, with uh, the full garb and, and the beard coming in. That classic style beard that's chiseled out and comes down. He had that since the beginning. <clears throat> it's just a great looking beard, man. Pretty cool. Uh, here's another one, uh, 1970, with the colored blood on Shohei Baba's face, the giant Baba's face. And uh, don't get me wrong, they had some bloody savage battles, but that blood was, was colored in on the cover. It's kind of funny. Then we're back to Wrestling World again, September 1970, uh, with the Sheik. Here is the Sheik's first Japanese cover, and it's it's on a uh, match covering Blassie and um, and the Sheik in the uh, WWA out in California, Los Angeles for the America's title or the Pacific Coast title. Either one, I'm not sure which champion Blassie was at this particular time. He held both. Um, at any event, uh, the Sheik didn't win it. Um, and, uh, again, Wrestling World. I mean, there is a lot of Wrestling World. Wrestling World Spring of 1971. Sheik uh, being announced as the U.S. champion. And he would have some classic battles with Bobo Brazil uh, for the United States. NWA United States Detroit version uh, of that belt. And what you know, Wrestling World again. August of 72. The Sheik more popular than ever and again another bloody shot of the sheik <clears throat> here's an interesting thing that happened i explained this in a video what i did on the um on the wrestler from 1970 to 1975 i believe the video was uh, that we made earlier um july 71 this in 1970 and 71 the wrestler hit a little lull and they didn't have an issue, 12 issues per year. And they were kind of spaced out between not even every other month. They were kind of like almost like a quarterly. One year they only had five issues. Uh, so 71 was uh, one of those years. They printed this by mistake. And it says July of 71. And this issue was sent out to the subscribers for mail-in because subscribers got their issue first before they hit the newsstands as part of the perks of having a uh, magazine delivered and subscribed to. Um, and they quickly realized that this was not supposed to be printed in July. It was supposed to go out in October. And they quickly yanked it off and re-released it in October. It's the same exact magazine. You can see it says July 71. And... Inside content is exactly the same. The pictures, the photos, and you can see October 71. Just re-released it later on. So if you're one of the lucky few people that had happened to get this in July, hang on to it. It's worth a few bucks for the people who do know about it. Some people are oblivious to it and just think it's an average wrestler and sell it uh, for your $20 range magazine, per se. Um, but it could go for a lot more for someone who knows what it is. And hopefully, maybe I just told you something new that you can look for yourself if you're a collector. Um, wrestling uh, Sports Stars of 1972. Here's a great shot of the Sheik. I uh, always love this one. And it's uh, talking about a match between him and Pedro Morales. The match must be made. And it does get made later on. Here's an interesting magazine. Uh... It's not the Sheik, it's the Sheik's manager, but this is the first and only time a manager got a full cover of a magazine. That's never happened up to this point, and it's never happened after. This is the first time you ever see a manager on the cover of a magazine, all alone. Um, pretty cool, very different. Uh, I don't know how it sold, but uh, there it is, the Sheik's manager, all alone. Here is a gorgeous, huge i'll try to get the whole thing in the shot olympic auditorium wrestling times program uh the sheik getting ready to battle out with his rival uh victor rivera for the america's title this took place in january 26th 1973 
and on the back is uh, all the match uh, lineup for that night. And uh, the Sheik would not win the title that night. But they had some fantastic bloody battles nonetheless. He would come out to uh, boost the crowd and give some competition to Rivera and Blassi. But, he, you know, he was the U.S. champion at the time. Uh, here is uh, another look at uh, Blassie and, uh, and the Sheik on the cover of April 1972. It's the same magazine we looked at from 1970 from Japan, only the Japan covered it immediately, and it took over two years for America to pick up that cage match, which the cage is quite different. You'll see it's like a, a fence uh, with a you know, steel uh, uh, channel going down the side and uh, uh, steel going across the top uh, with the wire mesh uh, inside. Quite different than what they have later on and what they have today. Uh, here is another um, program from the Olympic Auditorium. Uh, the, the first one we looked at was called uh, Olympic Auditorium Wrestling Times and that would change to a much smaller program later on this is may 1972 and the sheik is getting ready to take battle with uh, john tolis here's the back and it opens up inside there's no pages it's just a one fold paper um but the uh nonetheless the sheik going after america's title once again uh, at the uh, nwa wwa los angeles uh, territory um I love that territory. I love those belts. I love that history. We touched on it a little bit in another video where I talk about uh, the world title in the uh, NWA video we made. And I touched on the WWA title, America's title, what they're wrestling for was really a prestigious title. That was like the number one underneath the world's title. I should make a video on just the America's title for you guys to see all the America's champions. Here, and I'm looking through this, I really need a better copy of this. This thing's pretty roached, and I don't have roached issues. This is, wow, this really got away from me, and I will improve this uh, issue for sure. Uh, June in 72, The Wrestler, um, this has got some fantastic coverage of The Sheik. They gave him 20 pages inside. I've never seen any wrestler get that many pages ever in a, in a uh, Stanley Weston Bill Actor magazine. So they really covered him well. I'm going to show you a couple of pages uh, here. Um, here is the, uh, the front page, but I want to show you his rookie year when he first came out. Here's a real early picture uh, of the Sheik when he had the turban on. I mean, that's a very early shot. This is sometime in the late 40s. And uh, that was a very uh, early look. He would not wear that turban, but, you know, I'm not exactly sure how long, but not long at all. And, and it, would, it would change. And uh, just some shots of the Sheik. Here he is throwing uh, the fire. And um, I won't go through all of them, but, you know, you get an idea of, you know, some of the early shots of the Sheik. And getting into uh, up to 72. Here he is battling it out uh, with Pedro. Um, and it goes on if you want the magazine. I would certainly recommend getting that June of 72. There's probably you know, eight more pages that I didn't show you. <clears> that <throat> covers the Sheik uh, really well. Again, once again, Olympic Auditorium battling it out. John Tolis um, uh, for the uh, America's title. And it was probably the match uh, for this uh, program here. Yeah, it makes sense because two months later, May, June, July, August, three months later, the magazine had a three-month lag time. So most likely this is the match on the cover of this issue that went with that program of Tolis and the Sheik. Here is a classic shot that's been used so many different times on so many different magazine covers. Um, the Sheik uh, battling it out with Bobo Brazil. Here's another shot of the Sheik uh, in Japan. Um, maybe I can just open up a couple picks and show you the inside of what you got from the Japanese issues. Beautiful full color bloody shots of the Sheik. Just look at that man. It's just awesome shots there. Um, yeah, him and, uh, him and Baba had some wars and um, they were real bloody battles and the Japanese magazines were just awesome at covering it. <laughs> I mean that's some crazy shots bloodied up. Uh, here he is again in the crowd. 
I didn't realize it was so many pages. Here he is walking around town. Okay, this is covering him in his Japan tour and uh, showing him uh, outside the ring, which is something you never get to see. Um, and there's more of them. There's black and white pages, too. Um, I mean, even the black and white shots are great. Look at that close-up shot. <laughs> I mean, that's just, you know, that's cool. And I can see why a mag, you know, a, a distributor wouldn't want this on the cover of a magazine because it might scare the hell out of some of the patrons that come in the store. But, you know, we're wrestling fans, and for us hardcore people, you know, we're, we're buying that for that, you know. And here's just one more shot, okay? So if anyone's interested in, in following the Sheik and his Japanese uh, tour, uh, this is, let me see, 1972, October uh, of issue of Gong, separate volume. Here is another shot uh, two months before. Actually, I was a little bit out of order. I'm trying to stay in order as best I can. This is August 72. And then here we go back at October 72. You can see all three magazines. We have Gong, Gong Invitation to the Ring, and um, Pro Wrestling uh, Monthly, all in uh, August, September, October range. So they're, all of them are covering their own coverage of the Sheik uh, while he's on his tour in Japan. Okay, moving on now we're january 1973 i'll try to pick up the pace a little bit i don't mean to talk so much um i should just do more showing january 73 of um what is this it just says wrestling um wrestling souvenir issue it's got to be oh it's probably sports review yeah this is actually one of the first sports reviews um here's a great shot Again, it looks like he's posing for it. Uh, he's coming from around the, the, the curtain, uh, probably just stops and looks at the crowd, but he's not posing for the camera, supposedly. Um, August 1973 Wrestling Review. Pro Wrestling Annual. This was a football, baseball, and hockey magazine. It just did a one-off for wrestling, and they did it on the Sheik because the Sheik sold magazines. Wrestling Monthly, 1972. January 74, uh, with the Sheik. Johnny Valentine admits he would have murdered the Sheik. Him and Valentine had some bloody battles, several title changes for the Detroit NWA uh, United States Championship. This magazine also has Dick the Bruiser and Bruno when they were World Tag Team Champions together, and that's a shot of Bruno with the World Tag Team Championship belt. It's a rare shot. They weren't champions for very long at all. Excuse me there. And here's a cover of Ben Strong. And it's got Tolis and uh, the Sheik battling it out. Uh, Wrestling Guide, June of 74. August 74, Inside Wrestling. My only Sheik legitimate autograph that I got from my buddy Bud Carson from uh, Bud Carson Collectibles, also known as the Bud Father. Uh, check him out for all your uh, collectibles out in uh, Allentown, PA. Uh, this is uh, Wrestling Complete Roundup. With battling Dory Funk. This was my first magazine I ever got with a Sheik on it. And it's also the first magazine I ever got that wasn't an after magazine. And I picked it up. It's Wrestling Monthly. And it just had this creepy, sleazy, dirty feel to it. I'm like, what is this? I go, I've never heard of this magazine before. I was used to the wrestler, Inside Wrestling. And the, the pages were like dirty and, and dark. And uh, I felt like I needed a shower after I looked at it when I was a little kid. <laughs> and it freaked me out. I mean, I know it sounds stupid, but, you know, when you're 10, 11 years old and you're used to seeing something crisp and clean and cool, and then you get a hold of a, uh, a sleazy magazine like this, it's just like, wow, man, you know, it had way different feel to it. But it became one of my favorites because of that. Um, the Sheik on the cover, uh, he's, he's in here actually eating Wrestling Review. He's eating an issue of Wrestling Review. Kind of stupid. This looks like the Sheik that's on the cover right here. It's actually Tex McKenzie. The Sheik is down on the bottom. They had some classic battles also. Here's the Sheik throwing fire. For anyone who doesn't know what the fire is, the Sheik would hold a cigarette lighter and carry it in his trunks, and he would soak uh, paper in lighter fluid and let it dry. And therefore, it would dry and be kind of crisp, and it would and it'd be lighted up real quick, and it would get a big puff and a big ball of fire that would go out within seconds, but it would certainly dazzle the crowd. And uh, usually, it would go out before the flame even got close to the, the person it was going to hit. Not all the time. But that's how that trick uh, was done. I try to keep myself as kayfabe as possible, but just letting you know how they, they did that trick. Um, Wrestling World, again, we haven't seen him on Wrestling World for a while, so he's back in 1974, the winter issue. 
with uh, Pampiro Furpo. They have some great cage matches. I think we're going to look at a couple of those in a second. Let's take a look at some Japanese issues again. Here is the Sheik on the cover up with Dick the Bruiser. And let's look at some of the bloody shots. This one comes with a poster, pull-out poster that I will never take out. Uh, here's a great shot of the Sheik in a classic biting his forehead. Here is uh, Dick the Bruiser smashing the title belt in the Sheik's head. Here's the Sheik coming to the ring uh, with that beautiful looking belt. Um, I'll just show one more, I guess. Uh, here's a nice shot of the Sheik and Dick the Bruiser in battle. Um, yeah, let's do one more. So we got uh, a couple more action shots of them outside the ring. And you can see Japanese full color for this time period in 1974, nothing could beat it. There's nothing like it. <clears throat> Always love this color, cover of the Sheik in December 1974 and the cover of Gong with the blade in his mouth. Let's take a look at a couple of photos inside as well. Uh, this comes with another poster with Fanjiro Purple and uh, the Sheik. Uh, look at that cage match shot of this poster. I'm try trying to get it in there. Hopefully you can see it. I'm, I can't see my screen right now, so hopefully you're getting this. Um, pretty cool shot. Not pretty cool. That's an awesome shot from 1974. Um, let's take a look inside. If I can find it. Uh, here's another good shot of them on the top of the cage. Again, the Japanese people do it right. That brings us to October 1975. Uh, a match with the Sheik and Tiger Jeet Singh in the in the in the mud match, and uh, I said it before. Some people think mud match. Come on, how stupid is that? It's for girls. No, it's not. It, it's a it, that's a battle uh, for two Arabs. They uh, that that is their ultimate death match. Is fighting uh, in the mud. And let's take a look at some color shots of this because it's never been seen before. And here is the Sheik. They put the um, the mud in the ring. Uh, and surrounded it by two by fours, but it didn't stop it from going all over the place. Um, just some really cool shots of those two guys all uh, bloodied and uh, mudded up. And um, these color shots were never seen before. I'll, you know, I'll just go through it quick. So, but um, it's your first look at that in color. Uh, I don't know of any other magazine that covered it. So, and if it did, I'm sure it was black and white. Uh, here's what I'm talking about. Sometimes, I don't know if this was kayfabe or not. I mean, it looks like a legit burn, but I mean, I don't see any hair burnt, so I don't know. But uh, Sheik burns the referee. He's finally gone too far and he gets suspended. Uh, the Sheik, 1975, January, on the cover of Wrestling Monthly. Uh, the Sheik's the most barbaric moments in the history of wrestling. And here he is, bloodied up from Bobo, Brazil. May of 75, we have the Sheik and uh, Dick the Bruiser. This is one of my favorite covers, and he certainly looks like he's posing for it. I would beg to differ. I don't know. I have to challenge after on this. It looks like he's posing for it. No, I believe him because the guy didn't want to talk. He didn't want to be seen by cameras. So uh, great shot with him with the U.S. belt. Here is um, the Sheik and Don Leo Jonathan on the cover, June 75. Here is the Sheik and Abdullah on the cover of Gong, 1975. What a cover that is. Let's just take a look inside real quick. Uh, if I can find a color shot of that. Um, I'm looking, I'm looking. I'll just go to the one. I'm wasting a lot of time here. Uh, Sheik and Abdullah, great looking shot. I mean, come on. Awesome, 1975. Uh, let's get this moving because I'm already half an hour into this video. November 75, the Sheik lighting up the, uh, the paper. Here is Big Time Wrestling, March of 76. He wasn't on very many 76. Actually, this is the only one versus K Haystacks Calhoun. I also, also love this cover a lot. The Bloody Sheik uh, in the ring of January 77, Wrestling Monthly. The Sheik and Andre the Giant. Um very rare shot of those two on the cover of a magazine big book of wrestling september 77 
Here is a body press uh, program from the Detroit area with the Sheik on the cover and uh, holding the python. Great looking shot of the Sheik. Here we have a cover with Terry Funk when he's wrestling Terry Funk for the NWA world title in January 78 issue. I might be wrong about the world title. Um, he may have lost a Harley race by this point. I'm not sure, because there's, there's a lag between the issues. Um, but anyway, this match takes place in this movie, I Like to Hurt People. I'm not recommending this movie to anybody by any means. I am a B-titled horror sci-fi movie fanatic. I love this kind of shit. Therefore, I would not recommend it because I have terrible taste in movies. For, the, for those of you who know what it is and who like it, um, cool. For those of you who hated it, let me recommend you go back and give it another watch with fresh eyes. It takes place in Detroit, big time wrestling. It's about Andre the Giant and going after the Sheik and all the wrestlers that are trying to get the Sheik. It's a movie slash kayfabe documentary. It's worth it for just the backroom access the camera crew had the locker room shots, the ring uh, matches, it's cool. It might be on YouTube for free, I'm not sure. Um, my man Hannibal from uh, uh, up in Canada who does all the shoot interviews, he was supposed to do a uh, shoot interview with one of the directors of the film. I'm not sure if he ever did that or not. I have to check it out and see. If there is, I'll put a link uh, to it. And uh, it's interesting shit. The guy is selling copies of this on eBay now. It's really rare. This is the old VHS. I still have a ton of old VHS. Um, but I like to hurt people. It's all about the Sheik. It's all about the wrestlers trying to get to the Sheik. It's, it's pretty funny. Uh, it's pretty bad, but it's pretty funny. Here is the Sheik in uh, fall of 1978 against Harley Race. I love this cover. Always love this cover. Here is the Sheik again uh, in 77. November on the cover of Monthly Pro. Here is the Sheik. We're coming to the end here. It comes the Sheik and Abdullah versus the Funk Brothers. Um, let's see if we can take a look at a couple of picks inside. Here is the Sheik and Abdullah and the Funks. I think there's a lot of pictures here. I'll just go through a couple quickly. Um, but you get the you get the idea. Oh, you know, 1978, full color, full pages. Just a whole nother world of viewing our favorite wrestlers that we never got to see in color. Here is the, uh, I showed this in another video, um, the Sheik versus Bob Backlund, uh, title versus title. And this has Backlund battling the Sheik. And when Backlund won, the title and here is bob wearing the u.s title when he won the, the belt him and the sheik in a bloody battle in detroit uh, this is before the match the two coming to the ring and like i said i showed this earlier but for anyone new that's watching uh, our video uh, yes backland did hold and did beat the Sheik for his title. What a great shot. That would be a great eight by 10 for sure. Um, of course, Backlund would lose that title back. So through the eighties, there wasn't a whole lot with the Sheik that was strictly on the cover. Uh, we're gonna skip ahead up until 1990, 91. And here is a program from the FMW where the Sheik was a god in the FMW because it was right up his alley of hardcore wrestling. Frontier martial art wrestling is what FMW stood for. It was what ECW was born from. And uh, this, this had, give me one second when I get to it. The Sheik first appearance uh, with Sabu for the FMW uh, tag team tournament. This would lead up to that crazy fire match that became so historic. Um, that's probably on YouTube as well, but I'm sorry, it's hard to get the, with the glare, but here is the Sheik uh, and Sabu on, their, on Sabu's first tour of Japan. It was uh, during the FMW second anniversary show 
that took place in Osaka, Japan. And this is in a program to that event. Um, and sadly to say, this would be the Sheik's final issue where he is fully dominant on the cover. It's against uh, Onita in the FMW in a barbed wire match. He did beat Onita for the FMW uh, World Heavyweight Championship. And uh, he held that title. That would be the last title he ever held. And he would retire in 1989. Um, they had a huge ceremony for him in, in FMW. 56,000 people came to his retirement ceremony. Uh, he was totally beloved in Japan. And that's where he made uh, his name and his money and all his fans. And they really uh, put him on a pedestal. 56,000 people come out to see him for one last time. Uh, it was really, a, that was an honor. Um, for a guy who never sold out, who did his own thing, marched to the beat of his own drum, was never under the thumb of any promoter or any company, uh, had no problem saying, fuck you, and I don't care about your money, I care about my pride, and I care about my craft, and I, I'm doing what I'm going to do, and not what you want me to become for your entertainment. And Sabu, sadly, I say sadly, because the guy should have been a millionaire for all the things that he's done, but I respect the hell out of him for not being a sellout, and, uh, and, and not, you know, changing who he is, you know, for a few lousy dollars to make an asshole of yourself on television. Um, so, you know, Sabu and the Sheik, you know, the last of the two uh, heavyweight hardcore titans. And uh, it was sad to, to see them both go. And, of course, sad to see him pass away, uh, I believe, sometime later in 2000, early 2000. So there is my little rise of... The original Sheik. I hope you guys liked it. I got some more. You guys made some requests for the main event wrestling, so I will certainly do a main event. Um, I think I have them mostly com complete. I'm going through them now. My 80s issues are buried, so I have to dig them out. So I'll probably do a main event. I'll do one for wrestling superstars. And if you guys want to see anything, and if I have it, I'll be happy to show you. Again, thanks for all your subscribers out there. I, I can't believe there's over 100 now. I mean, that's just ridiculous. I, I never thought anyone would even care about watching these, these videos. So I really appreciate all you guys, all your comments, all your positivity in a world that's filled with nothing but negativity. So you, you guys have been pretty great. And I'll be happy to show you anything that I can uh, if I have it. All right. And uh, I think this is our 35th video. So if you haven't checked out the other ones, please check them out. All right. See you on the next.